Good evening. Welcome to our daily devotional scripture that encourages you to pray. My name is Jim Buckman. I'm pastor at Faith Lutheran Church, and I'm also a wing chaplain in the United States Air National Guard. And I had to come down to the base to help out with a couple of things yesterday and today. And so that's why I'm in uniform and doing this uh, video for you from the base. And so I pray you guys richest blessings on your day. And I would also appreciate your prayers for our airmen. We continue to have airmen who are in harm's way on behalf of this nation. And, uh, and so your prayers for them and for their loved ones is greatly appreciated. Tonight, we're going to be looking at Psalm 25. And I'm really excited about it. Uh, one of the cool things about Psalm 25 is that it is the first recorded instance in scripture of an acrostic being used. Uh, there are 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet. And Psalm 25, if you notice, it has 22 verses. And so what David did under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit is in each successive verse, he uses the successive uh, letter from the Hebrew alphabet with a word then to start that verse. And so uh, if you know me, you know I love using acrostics and acronyms. I think they're uh, a helpful way uh, to help people remember the point from God's word. And and so I'm a fan of Psalm 25 uh, for that reason alone. <laughs> so I want to encourage you to get out your Bibles, get out your notepads, your pens. We're going to Look at Psalm 25, and Psalm 25 is going to lead us in prayer. We're going to read through Psalm 25. There's a development that happens in Psalm 25 that I'm going to highlight, and we're going to pray about that. And then we're going to see some reflection time in Psalm 25. We're going to pray about that. And then some specific takeaways from Psalm 25. We're going to pray about those as well also. So let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you for today. We thank you for your love and your mercy. It's new to us every morning. We thank you for technology, especially when technology works. And we thank you that we can leverage technology uh, to, to grow in our faith, to encourage other people to grow in their faith. We come to you tonight, Father, from your word, uh, on the basis of your word, Psalm 25 specifically, and, and your whole counsel. And we desire, Father, to pray as you lead us to pray in the wisdom of your word. Uh, Father, we pray all these things in Jesus' name, according to your will and for your glory. All of God's children we all say, amen. Amen. All right. So, guys, Psalm 25. Uh, so the first thing I want to do is kind of look at this. I think it's kind of cool, this development that happens uh, inside of Psalm 25. So what I'm talking about, we, we, we pick it up here in verse 2. Uh, it says, Oh my God, in you I trust. And so we have that word trust. And then the trust that David has in God develops and, and his trusting in God becomes uh, desiring God's teaching. Uh, we see that in verse 4, teach me your path. So trust uh, bears fruit. Uh, it, it bears the fruit of desiring to be taught. Okay. And then, but it doesn't stop there. Um, teaching in turn becomes discipleship. Verse 5, lead me in your truth. And so that's that's a big development. Uh, you know, uh, in our church body, we have a strong tradition of Christian education. And Christian education is a wonderful thing. It's a tremendous blessing. Um, Christian education has its fruition then in discipleship. Uh, Christian education should always be outcome focused. Um, and one of the things that then discipleship does is discipleship develops patience. Um, that's uh, verse five. For you, I wait all the day long. So then David is growing in his patience. So how do we pray about this revelation from scripture? How, how, how might we pray? Well, let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you that you give us the gift of faith and that one of the fruits of this gift of faith is that we trust in you. And we thank you that this just unfolds and unfolds and unfolds in our lives, that that faith becomes trust, trust becomes wanting to be taught, wanting to be taught by you, being taught by you turns into discipleship, discipleship turns into fruit bearing. Father, I'm just reminded of how watching uh, a, a little baby uh, turn into a grown adult, how their body just grows and grows and develops and develops, and it was planned that way by you from the very beginning. And so we thank you, Father, that we are fearfully and wonderfully made according to your design and your blueprint. And so we thank you for that blessing in our lives and the blessing that you intend for this to be in other people's lives. Thank you so much, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. 
Okay, uh, then um, I think it's also kind of interesting that apparently uh, disciples, I think this is kind of uh, 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 agreeable, I think, if we're honest about it, that disciples oftentimes want God to have selective memory. <laughs> Uh, what, what do I mean by that? Well, look at verses 6 and 7. Uh, David says, Remember your mercy, O Lord, and your steadfast love. That's verse 6. So this is the, remember this. And then verse 7, Remember not <laughs> the sins of my youth or my transgressions. So, you know, I think David's just being pretty transparent here. You know, he's saying, God, you know, please remember your, you know, your your good attributes and please stop thinking about, you know, don't dwell anymore on, on my faults and my failures and my failings. Um, I think we should pray about this. I, I, I think there's, there's, this is a good prayer point for us. So let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Father, um, we do come to you and, and really we do honestly, we, we're thankful that you have uh, uh, selective memory, that you who know all things choose to remember our sins no more. And so we're so thankful for that. We're thankful that we can come to you and confess and then also ask for for forgiveness and uh, and that you would set these things aside as far as the East is from the West. Uh, so, Father, we thank you. We thank you for the blessing that this is in our lives, the blessings of the, the peace that surpasses all human understanding because this is only um, received uh, through your grace. And so we thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, okay. So then let's look at um, verse uh, 11, and then we're going to also then skip down a little and then look at verse 18, because I think in the construction of Psalm 25, there's, a, there's, there's connectivity here. So verse 11 says, For your name's sake, O Lord, pardon my guilt, for it is great. Okay, so uh, I think it's interesting to note, important to note, the first 10 verses are almost, if you will, a string of accolades, accolades um, from David regarding God. If you look at the first 10 verses in Psalm 25, there's all these great things that David's saying. And now in verse 11, it's like David finally, you know, is going to get down to business, right? He's going to, he's going to now, he's going to ask God what he's really talking to God about, you know, for forgiveness, you know, for your name's sake, O oh Lord, pardon my guilt, for it is great. There's quite a difference between verse 11 and the previous 10 verses. If you look at, just open up your Bibles and look at it there. And then, um, and then we see verse 18 uh, and kind of a return um, to verse 11 and also an expansion and development of it. Verse 18, then, consider my affliction and my trouble and forgive all my sins. And I think um, that, there, you know, as I was looking at and reflecting on it, the thought came to my mind that many times, I know for me personally, there are times where, you know, I've already asked God to forgive me of something, but I just, I feel so bad about it. Um, maybe weeks later, months later, years, decades later, I, I find myself coming back to God and asking God for forgiveness again. And, and maybe you've been there also. Um, there's nothing wrong with asking God for forgiveness again. You were forgiven the first time. So was I. And so we praise God for that. And just so thankful that God desires to have this uh, conversation, ongoing conversation with us. I think also, you know, when I um, look at verse 18, I, I do want to say this, you know, uh, you know, it, it doesn't really say in Psalm 25 what the great sin is that David's talking about, our sins, plural, great sins, plural, that, that David's talking about here. You know, we could all try to sort of guess what it might be. Um, that's really what it would be, though. It would be a guess because it's not clearly revealed there in Scripture, nor in any of the earliest uh, historical documents that I could find. Um and I do want to say this about David. David at least has the integrity to take responsibility for the pain in his life. You know, consider my affliction and my trouble, forgive me all my sins. And there's a very close connectivity there. He has afflictions, he has troubles, and he recognizes it's connected to his sin. And I, and I think that responsibility is 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 a hallmark of discipleship. Uh, it's something as parents, you know, we have the responsibility of of um, developing that within our children, and um, 
uh, it will serve them well because when they become adults, that's going to be something that will uh, help them navigate through, you know, sometimes poor decisions on their part, but it will, they won't become even worse off uh, by not taking responsibility. Uh, I think it's important, you know, to learn from David and not to say, you know, God has a plan in this. You know, sometimes we, we know Christians that are like that. You know, they're, they're in a heap of trouble, largely because of their own making. Yeah, 10% of it might be somebody else's fault, but 90% is their fault, quite frankly. And then you'll hear them say, well, you know, God has a plan in this. Uh, you know, we need to stop blaming God for our sinfulness. You know, uh, in God, there is no shadow or turning, right? Um, there is no deceit. Um, he is holy and he is righteous. And so we need to stop, you know, trying to pass it off and, and start taking responsibility for what we do wrong. And then just come simply and plainly and cleanly like David and say, Lord, forgive me for I have sinned. Woe is me. I'm a man of unclean lips, you know, um, Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Father in heaven, uh, we come to you now, and some of us are, are burdened by things we've asked for forgiveness many times over. Some of us, we know people. We're living with people. We're married to people. Uh, we have family members, maybe, that are just burdened by things that they've asked for forgiveness. Father, show us... Use us to help them know your grace. Know that they are truly forgiven. Help us not to hold things over people's heads either. Help us to to, to not um, just constantly remind people of past sins and past failures because uh, you and your grace, you choose to remember it no more. So help us to be like you in our relationships with others also. Father, we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And then, guys, the uh, last one we're going to look at is verse 14. Uh, verse 14 says, The friendship, uh, and really maybe a more faithful way of translating that is the secret counsel. Um, the secret counsel of the Lord is for those who fear him, and he makes known to them his covenant. So verse 14 again, The secret counsel of the Lord is for those who fear him, and he, that's the Lord, makes known to them his covenant. Scripture says, of course, you know, the fear fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Uh, you know, there would be no need, uh, there would be no point in fearing God if there was no possibility of redemption, right? I mean, if there was no way that there was any possibility that God would forgive us, then what? it'd be, it'd be silly to be afraid of, of God, to have any fear towards God, because it's a foregone conclusion of what's going to happen. But because there's a possibility of forgiveness, he offers forgiveness to us, then um, a wise person fears the Lord because uh, we we desire to, to be forgiven and to be made righteous. And that's, you know, really what we hear in the very well-known hymn, Amazing Grace. Uh, you know, I, I'll just read the words for us. Uh, Was grace that taught my my heart to fear and grace my fears relieved. Let me say it again. Was grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fears relieved. You know, I think it's also important to note that verse 14, of course, comes fairly quickly after verse 11, uh, where we learn David is confessing his big sin or sins. And I think it's just, it's neat how verse 14 follows that. Uh, the secret counsel of the Lord is for those who fear him. David feared the Lord. Um, because of his relationship, being in the right relationship with God by God's grace. The friendship, the secret counsel of the Lord is for those who fear him, and he makes known to them his covenant. And so I just think it's neat that this verse 14 then is a reminder that God's friendship and God's care for you is not based on uh, your quote-unquote perfect life. We are saved by grace through faith, not by works. It's the gift of God. It's not of ourselves so that no one would boast. Amen. Amen. Guys, tomorrow's Wednesday. It's our last Wednesday in Advent. We're going to be broadcasting live at uh, 10 a.m. and 6.30, so it won't have a 7.15 daily devotional. Hope you can join us for one of those two services. I pray you guys richest blessings on your day. And uh, so let's go in peace. Let's serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good night.